In this video, I'll be taking apart the ThinkPhone by Motorola. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. As always, before we start, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. The plastic bezel around the camera lens also needs to be peeled off, since there's a screw underneath which is holding down the back plate. There's a single Phillips screw which needs to be removed. Here's a better look at the carbon fiber backplate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off, so you won't need to remove the back plate in order to replace those. There is some graphite film on the lower portion of the phone which helps transfer heat that will need to peel off. There are now 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. There are some antenna lines drawn on the top plastic cover which are the light gray color lines. The NFC antenna is located here and the wireless charging coil is located over here in the center. There are also multiple layers of graphite film to help transfer heat. There is some more graphite film over the motherboard which needs to be peeled off. Now the cables for the battery can be disconnected, followed by the rest of the flex cables. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board, which can be disconnected by popping them off. On the main board, there's a 50 megapixel primary camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel depth lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's some copper tape over the front shields, and the camera connectors can be disconnected by popping them off. There's also a secondary microphone on the top corner. On the other side, we can see the 32 megapixel front facing camera, or depending on which region device you have, the front facing camera might be a 16 megapixel camera instead of a 32 megapixel. There's a proximity sensor on the top corner, and there's more graphite film and copper tape on the back shields, as well as thermal paste. Once the graphite film and copper tape are peeled back, we can see more thermal paste on top of the RAM and processor, as well as these chips, and a thermal pad over this one. Now when it comes to removing the battery, there are no pull tabs to help you pry it off, so you'll need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery.
There's another antenna line drawn on this plastic cover, which is this light gray color line. The vibrator motor is located on the other side and it's held down with some adhesive. Once the battery has been removed, we can see this flex cable for the screen, which is routed through an opening in the mid-frame, and this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the sim reader. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, you'd have to remove the screws on the top plastic cover and the cover itself, you'd then have to disconnect the battery cables and pry the battery off, giving you access to the flex cable for the screen, and then you would disconnect that, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the whole screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure we run the flex cable back through the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. The other two ends of the flex cable as well as the coaxial cable need to be disconnected from the subboard. There's a single Phillips screw that's holding down the subboard. Once that screw and cover are removed, we can see the fingerprint sensor which is connected to the subboard. There's a red rubber gasket around the charger port itself, a liquid damage indicator sticker, and the primary microphone is located underneath this shield. Here's a look at the other side. To remove the speaker assembly on the bottom, the flex cable needs to be gently peeled off, and then the speaker can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at the speaker, and the speaker also has the little Y phone balls, which make it sound larger than it actually is. Here's a look at this flex cable with the sim reader. Once those flex cables have been peeled off, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber, which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. And we can see the thermal paste over here, which transfers the heat from the processor to the copper vapor chamber. There's a small antenna board on the bottom corner of the phone. The fingerprint sensor itself is held down with some adhesive. The flex cable for the volume keys and power buttons right out through an opening in the mid-frame. So if you need to replace that, you'd have to actually pry the screen off as well. And the repeat speaker is located over here on top, and that's also held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 4 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.